funny things about fantasy is that if you read it long enough, no matter what you read, you'll eventually run into either a Jesus allegory or a King Arthur allegory. This book is both, and also Beowulf, and Islam, and Odin, and Charlemagne, and Native American legends, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they managed to fit Sherlock Holmes in there somewhere. <laughs> interview authors, and are finally updating on time. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and if not, welcome back! I've been dreading this review for a while, but I knew it was coming. Those of you who watched my Mistborn video might remember that I mentioned my first epic fantasy series as Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, and I knew eventually I'd have to review it. The problem is that I grew up on this series. How do you review something that's such a core component of your identity? It's like asking someone in my generation to review Harry Potter, whether or not they like the books. They're not going to be able to do it. But my integrity is on the line, so I'm going to give it a shot anyway. The Wheel of Time is 14 books long, and each one of those books is heavy enough to be used as a deadly weapon. As a result, I have no intention of reviewing every single one, and even an overview of the major plot points will take all night. I'm going to give the most bare-bones summary I possibly can without spoiling anything. So, good luck me. Starts off fairly typical for a fantasy book. The main character is a farm boy in an isolated community. And the plot of the novel begins when a wizard comes to town. So the town gets attacked by a bunch of monsters, and the wizard has to take the main character and get out of town. And here's where it gets weird. This town has three chosen ones, and the prophecy only has room for one of them. Even worse, the town has several potential wizards who, if not taught, will likely become dangerous to their community. So basically, an eighth of the population of this tiny random village is super important for stopping the oncoming apocalypse and pretty much all of them have to leave together under cover of night. This book takes place in a world where only women can become wizards. Men and women use different sources for their magic, and the men's source has been corrupted, so any man who uses magic invariably goes insane. In fact, the most recent apocalypse was caused when every single male wizard in the world went crazy at once, and literally broke geology in their demented magic-powered raving. Any male with the potential to use magic has to either be killed or have the magic removed from them which tends to drive them to suicide. So when the main chosen one is discovered to be a potential wizard, things get kind of nasty. Now, this series does a lot of things really well. In particular, the invented history. However, the most brilliant thing about the book is how it deals with its premise, which is the idea that over time, retellings of stories will become so far removed from the events that inspired them that they will become completely unrecognizable. So if you read these books very carefully, you realize that it's written in such a way that it's implied to be the prototypical story of King Arthur and of Jesus and of Odin and of Beowulf with the idea that this book isn't full of allusions to those legends. Those legends are allusions to the actual events that the book is describing. The most obvious one being the sword and the stone. In this case, the stone being a massive fortress called the Stone of Tear that has never been taken by an outside force. And the sword is a magical sword-shaped artifact that the fortress was built to protect. The longer you read the series and the closer you look, the more of these things you find. And each one gives a little bit of a feeling of triumph to the reader. Now, as I've said, this was my favorite series when I was younger, so I'm a little bit afraid that nostalgia is coloring my perception of its quality. So, and along with that, this series does have some significant problems that need to be addressed. The first being that the author has a very difficult time writing women. All of his men are fascinating, unique characters, but all of his women are nearly the same person. Uh, and after a while, it can get a little bit grating. The geography makes no sense, and each culture is described in such a way that it feels like he really only created one dominant trait of each culture, which is not how culture works. Thirdly, these books are extremely long and can take a lot of time to get going. Things that get set up don't necessarily get satisfying conclusions for a very long time. I found the ending of the entire series rather unsatisfying. On the flip side of that, the author is a military historian, so he absolutely knows what he's doing when it comes to military engagements. The way political fallout spiderwebs out from the actions of each character is extremely well thought out. And regardless of what kind of fantasy you're into, the storylines of this series are so varied that you're going to enjoy at least one of them. Despite the flaws I mentioned, I really enjoyed these books. They're an epic in the classic sense, and they formed a lot of the reader I am today. This channel would not exist without The Wheel of Time. In fact, it's entirely possible, though unlikely, that without The Wheel of Time I would never have gotten into fantasy at all. So, I would absolutely still recommend it. 
The opening to the series is a bit of a slog, as you would expect for a series consisting of 14 doorstoppers. But the first, third, and fifth through ninth books of the series are some of the best books I've ever read. Two and four are kind of eh. But if you like epic fantasy, you like Tolkien, or you like Arthurian legend, I definitely suggest giving these books a look. The Amazon link to the first book, The Eye of the World, is below. Have you read The Wheel of Time? What did you think? Let me know in the comments below, or just suggest another book that you think I should review. Remember to like this video and click on the dragon to subscribe, or just watch more videos like this from the book cafe. I will see you all on Thursday, and in the meantime, read good fantasy. Have a lovely night, everyone.